On today's collection spotlight, I'm going to be talking to you about the Tara Humara mountain king snake, Lampropeltis pyromelana nablocki. Hi, I'm TC Houston, former zookeeper and lifelong reptile enthusiast, and you're watching my channel called Reptile Mountain TV. Hey everyone, this beautiful creature right here is a Tara Humara mountain king snake, Lampropeltis pyromelana nablocki, which is quite a mouthful. This is Martha, she's 16 years old, and um, these wonderful animals uh, get their name from where they're from, the Tara Humara Mountains, aka the Sierra Madre Occidentals, aka the Chihuahua Mountains. Um, basically, a mountain range in southwestern Mexico in Chihuahua, Mexico the um, beautiful uh, 10,000 foot range mountains. So, um, and the mountains get their name from the people group that occupy the mountains. And you ready for it? Wait for it. You guessed it. The Tara Humara people, who interestingly enough are a rather veganish type. They're 90, 90 something percent vegan in that population of folks. And um, another interesting fact is that they are super athletes. They produce a lot of super athletes. Um, really well known for their running ability. So anyway, back to the snake. So this species comes from a beautiful mountain range, the Tarahumaras, full of steep cliffs and canyons with summits reaching around, like I'd said, 10,000 feet and height, not quite the Colorado's 50 plus 14ers, however, um, still a decent height. Now, this uh, subspecies is found in Arizona, New Mexico, down to the Durango, um, Durango state border in Mexico. And as far as taxonomy and speciation goes, um, there was a study in 2011 that did some genetic work and um, they used the evolutionary species status and a few others, a uh, few other ideas, specifically some genetic workup and some of um, uh, their natural history to try to elevate these guys, the Lampropeltis pyromelana nablocki, or knobs as we call them in the hobby, um, to full species status. And basically they had like a designation geographically and said everything below this line is nablocki, everything above this line is pyromelana, and so they split the Sonoran uh, mountain king snake into two species, the Tarahumara, the Nablocki and the Sonoran or Arizona mountain king snake, Pyromelana, up to the north. However, um, there were many issues that arise from this, especially like um, field identification and some morphology, even behavioral and other aspects of biology and natural history that really um, didn't uh, sit well with a lot of researchers as far as that idea and recommendation for full species status. So the Southwestern Center for Herpetological Research, they um, decided to reject that and kept this animal, these animals as a subspecies of the Sonoran mountain king snake, the Pyromelana group or pyros as they're calling the hobby. So they kept this as Lampropeltis pyromelana nablocki and then kept the northern version, uh, Pyromelana, Pyromelana. Um, and either way, the, speed, the morphology of the animal coming from the south, the southern region in the Tarahumara range in Mexico, not New Mexico, not the Sky Islands of Arizona, but in Mexico has this look. Now this one's, this Martha, she has really deep magenta colors, which is unlike um, some because most of them actually have much more bright red, sometimes an orange. She's a deep maroon, which is kind of cool. But this blotched style is a southern variation that you can see a little bit in some of the American um, wild counterparts, but for the most part, it's a southern thing from the Tarahumara Mountains. So this little beauty is a pyro, um, but... A nablocki. 
Okay, so now that you've had your like taxonomy lesson, like, or I don't even know if it was a lesson or I just made you more confused or I was just spouting out stuff and it was pointless, but um, now that you are certain uh, that this isn't a block eye, <laughs> and it was either way, um, I'm gonna show you another one and uh, I'll just tell you a little bit about why they're so awesome. Okay, so check out the red on Leah. This is Leah. She's got some great red coloration. She's kind of got a higher side pattern here. Her blotches don't go as deep. You see that there running across? Yeah. She's much more of a typical looking Nablock eye, um, the common standard look. Um, and these guys are my absolute favorite colubrid and favorite king snake um, species. Uh, you know, I bought one a while back and I was addicted. I, I, was on, I bought it from... Um, from uh, Bob Applegate, the kind of the king snake guru, and um, he, uh, I, I got this beautiful animal, and immediately I wanted more. I was like, oh my gosh, these are so pretty. I love the um, bright red colors, as you can see here, or in these photos that I'm gonna be posting. Yeah, um, check out the beautiful coloration here on these animals. Um, not only that, but look at the head pattern on these creatures. Absolutely gorgeous. Very personable. Leah's a little jumpy because I haven't handled her in a while, but they like to hold on to you. You see how she's grabbing my thumb there? She likes to hold on to you, and as long as you're letting her or them hold you and not the other way around, they're so chill. Um, they're, I just love them so much. I also like the fact that these guys are typically good feeders on rodents straight from the egg, unlike their northern pyro counterparts, um, which can sometimes be finicky at first. Not always, but sometimes. Um, and these guys will grow to about 40 inches. You saw Martha, she was 16. She's a little, she's not huge. She's actually around 38 inches. I, am, I had a 10 year old male from Bob Applegate that was 41 inches. So I think they can go to 48 inches, they say four feet, but um, I haven't seen one that big. Um, you know, and I keep them at a, uh, relatively cooler than some of my other animals. So a hot spot for this little one is 85 degrees and a cool area between 68 and 72 for the cool side of the cage. And they thrive at these temperatures. Um, and to breed them, they have to be brumated, um, and below 58 degrees for at least 90 days, preferably around 52 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit for around 90 to 120 days. I try to shoot for making sure that they are at their coldest from Thanksgiving to Valentine's Day. That's kind of how I remember it. So Martha, she just came out of brumation just a little while ago. Um, and usually they come out feeding aggressively on mice. And then after their first shed, you can put the male in with the female um, and they'll breed and then they'll lay around th three to eight eggs, five is an average clutch. And those eggs, brew, uh, incubated at 82 degrees is a perfect temperature and these little babies will pop out at a decent size, big enough to even take frozen thawed rodents as their first meal. Now, not all of them do that. There's always outliers, but for most of them, my, mine will take frozen thawed right off the bat, sometimes right off the tongs, out of the egg. That makes me love these guys because it's just simple and um, they're just so, so beautiful. Such a pretty little girl here. So. And as long as I have king snakes in my collection, I will have the knobs, the Nablocki, the Tarahumara Mountain King Snake. And as always, thanks for watching. Hey, and please check out my buddy Luke's videos over at Rooted in Reptiles, his channel. Um, if you're interested in watching a good dude, um, you know, begin his journey of becoming a full-time reptile breeder. Uh, that is a great place for you to watch his journey going from you know living in his parents house to getting his own home to getting his own reptiles set up and to becoming a full-time professional 
in the reptile industry. So check him out. He also knows a lot about blue tongue skinks, and my channel is mostly about blue tongue skinks, um, but he knows a lot about other reptiles too. So check him out. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And please share this video. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. Um, and hit the subscribe button. And also, write something down in the comments. I love to hear what you have to say. I really enjoy watching it and reading those. I'll catch you on another video.